Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you get a job from me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. See me once, you've seen me twice. Another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, my name is Wallace. And I have just met a girl named Lucy, Lucy Lamro. Isn't that the most musical thing you ever heard? I tell you, I could spend hours just saying it, Lucy Lamro. And I, I could spend pages just telling you about Lucy, Mr. Valentine, only I figure there's enough competition as it is. In fact, there's too much. And that's what I want to see you about, because it's mighty perplexing. You see, Lucy told me there wasn't anyone, uh, steady, I mean, and she's not the sort to go telling fibs. Only then, who, Mr. Valentine, is the man who just told me to stay away from Lucy? Or he'd kill me? This man said he'd kill you, Mr. Wallace? Oh, I'd much rather you just call me Wally, Miss Brooks. Here, sit down. Won't you have a soda or something? Uh, we... This man, you said he said... Well, yes, just came right out and said it. And Mr. Valentine, at first I thought he must be Lucy's father. Only when I noticed he was well-preserved, I thought he was more likely a brother. Father? Brother? Why would... Well, uh... you know how men kinfolk can be about a girl like that, living all by herself in a big city. A protective, sort of. Oh, uh, she lives all alone, huh? Oh, she's never actually said, but I guess so. Right across the street, apartment 17A, and that's why I asked you to meet me in this drugstore here. Well, your girl does all right for herself. City Towers over there is one of the fanciest places in town. Any money she's got is some honest hard work. She's a working girl, I tell you. Something or other in the theatrical profession. Oh. oh but, but she's not like what you think of those people. She's clean and straightforward. Nothing flashy about her at all. Not even false eyelashes. Okay, okay. Stop being scared to death. We'll get the wrong idea about Lucy and tell us about well, this I, guy. I just don't know her very well yet, and I don't like to pry, but there's this man who follows her all the time. I've seen him. Go on. Well, that, that's about all there is. I asked her about him, but she's never even noticed him. But I have. He sits here pretending he can't make up his mind about the flavor of ice cream. Only the minute Lucy comes out the door of that apartment house, he ducks. And then he follows her. I've seen it, I tell you. Private detective, George? Mm, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. One of those eye fellas, maybe. So, yesterday afternoon, when I seen him worrying over a banana split, I took the bit in my teeth. Well, what do you mean? I mean, I accosted him. I said, see here, you buster, what kind of a caper are you trying to... Well? Well... That's all the further I said. He struck me. Oh, he was the sensitive type. Holy smoke, it was awful. He just knocked me flat. And then he said I could stay away from her or he'd kill me. <laughs> and then he walked out with, without even paying for his food. <laughs> well, there, there's nothing funny about it. <laughs> he, he was a big, heavy-set man in an overcoat and a green hat. Now, that's all I can tell you. But he had fists like hams. Here, just look, look. See, on my cheek where he... All right, right there? all right, yeah, sure. Eh? We know, we know. It's not funny. I'm sorry. Oh, your jaw is swollen, isn't it? He was wearing a ring. He hit me so hard, he knocked part of it loose, and, and he left so fast he didn't even notice the part. Here, here. Now, see? A diamond. He was wearing a diamond ring. Hmm. Sensitive type with class. <laughs> Look, I know I'm not too smart about these things, but Lucy's a nice girl, and she doesn't know what it's all about either. And I think somebody ought to find out before there's any real trouble. <sighs> yeah, somebody like me... Okay, Brooksy, you stick around with Wally oh. here. See if you can spot the menace. George. I'm going to visit the main tent. I want to see the big attraction. Name of Lucy. What are you leaning on the bell for? You tired or something? Uh... Your Lucy Lamoureux? Is it an item to apologize for? Come in. <laughs> Thanks. You're who? Huh? Never mind, I'll call you Popeye. On account of the muscle. Uh-huh. Valentine. George Valentine. Sentimental, ain't it? <laughs> no, 
<laughs> no, sister, it's stupid. The blank look on my face is surprise, that's all. I don't like to be called sister. No? That's friendly. Sit down at that, won't you? I like surprises. <laughs> look, brown eyes, he showed me your picture. It's you, all right, but you're the surprise. That's nice. Who's him? Uh, never mind. Let's clear you up first. Am I difficult? You're a big success, I understand. How do you get that way? I'm theatrical. Chorus? Yeah, you must be a regular hermit. See me once, you see me twice. What do you do? Huh? <laughs> Never mind, skip it. I, uh, I take kisses from idiots. Only, uh, who's the big heavy set man in the green hat who waits for you in the drugstore and follows you? Which drugstore? Hey, where's your Harry? I want to see a man named Wallace. Who's he? Your new one. Well, don't you even have one named Wallace? It don't connect. Oh, brother, that does it. Bye-bye, Lucy. I don't see we've achieved much. Come again more often or something. Oh, Where do you think you're going? Well, into the elevator, friend. Keep your powder dry. No, you're not. Oh? What's the matter? I mess up your overcoat? I want to talk. All right, then. Don't wave your hands. One of the stones is going out of your ring. It doesn't look pretty. Shut up. All right, all right. Go on, talk. What have you been doing with her? What are you up to? What's the big hey, idea hey, of taking... Hey, slow down, Buster. Get you... your hands off of me, and you stay away from her. If you're the one that's been taking her out, the one she's been meeting, I'll kill you. You hear me? I'll Cut kill it you. Out. Cut it out. Watch and your I'll blood show pressure. you to stay away from me. Watch out. out. No, 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 Sleep tight, Buster. I've got a return engagement with your girl. Stand still, I said. What do you mean by... Oh, you're mad I don't ring the bell this time. That's too bad. I don't like double talk like you gave me before, sister. Let go of I me. called the cop on the beat to haul away your boyfriend down there. What? Yeah. Green Hat's a little too jealous for the public good. Also, he needs some smelling salts. All right, now take off the hat and glasses and start making sense. Who is he? I said let go. There. I beg your pardon. And I only want to know what... What did you say? I said whoever you are, get out of here before I call a policeman myself. Hey, look, Lucy, say some more. What kind of an act Get out of my apartment this instant. Now, look, look, I've got eyes. I can't be crazy. You're the same girl that I just I'm Lucy Lamoureux, the dancer, and I've never seen you before, and if you don't... (laughs) See me once, you've seen me twice? Give me those glasses. Blue eyes. Blue, not brown. Hey, what in the name Her name is Audria, and I saw her running down the back way when I came up just now from lunch. Two of you... She's your twin sister. Yeah, she's got to be. Everything else is just... Audrea Murphy, and she's my new partner, thank you. Her hair is dyed, though. You might have noticed that if you hadn't been so busy confusing the kind of girl she is with the kind of girl I am. Oh, listen, I, uh, I'm sorry. Sure, two coats there, two hats. Well, even your clothes are identical. Well, now, look, you can't blame me We wear them in the act. I've arranged our first engagement for next week. You've probably never been able to afford the type nightclub that engages the Lamoureux sisters. Shadow dancing. But uh, I suppose you prefer burlesque anyway. Huh? Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm all lost now. Wait, you just said Audrey wasn't your sister. My sister was killed in an automobile accident last year. It took me months and months to find someone who looked enough like me to replace her. The Laudry has apparently just had some fun confusing you. Well, it compliments me for making such a good choice. But whatever your little problem is concerning her rugged admirers, I assure you I'm not interested and I'm very busy, so please get out. Now, just a minute, Miss Lamoureux. That guy in the overcoat, the one Mr. Valentine here slugged, is a pretty important man. His name's Muscat. Lefty Muscat, and he's got a record like Officer, for the last time, it's none of my business. Miss Murphy's personal life is her own, so you can just wait till she gets back. Hold it, hold it, please. I told you what this boy Wallace said about... Wallace is a very nice boy, but a little too nosy, don't you think, Mr. Valentine? He says Lefty Muscat's been following you, not Audrey. Nonsense. Why would he? That's what I said to Wallace, unless this Muscat person is colorblind where eyes are concerned. Anyway, I certainly don't sway the way Audrey does when I walk. 
couldn't possibly confuse us. Unless Audrey wanted Lefty to be confused. What's that? Muscat's in the confidence game. Blackmail, shakedown. Really? I'm the one who's confused by this time. Look, your officer friend here says he's known you for years. You and your sister made a pile of dough in the past. Well? Uh, All I'm trying to tell you, Miss Lamoureux, is I've never liked that Audrey since the first time I saw her up here a week ago. And now, when Mr. Valentine gave me Lefty, Lefty Muscat, it gave me something to go on. So I checked the records fast. Muscat's been seen with a dumb blonde several times the last year, and her name's Audria. She helps in his payoffs. Well, I still don't understand how that concerns me. Don't you? She's crooked, too. You've got a lot of dough. She's worked her way in to be your new partner. Oh, no, this is ridiculous. I know she seems pretty dumb, but just... She's dumb like a fox, I tell you. Muscat's used her as a go-between when he couldn't show himself. Look, Lucy, please. Big, successful dancer hires unknown partner. Don't you think you ought to be a little bit interested in her personal life? I'm giving her a good job. What could she want? That's what your Mason Dixon boyfriend wants me to find out, I guess. Why? What's up? What's the reason for all Muscat's jealousy? What kind of danger are you in? Oh, nonsense. I'm not in any... Well, what should I do? All right, help me check back. Where'd you first hear of Audrey? How'd you happen to give her the job of partner? Because she looked so much like me that... Oh, I, I see what you mean. There was an agent, I think, called me just two or three weeks ago. I'd never dealt with him before, but... Here, Franz Kling. He called me and arranged an appointment for him. Let me see that. Franz Kling, theatrical bookings, carnival, nightclub specialty acts. Kling's clusters of talent. He called and she came. But, but Audrey... It just doesn't make sense to me that she could be up to anything besides winking at men. Sure, or... sure. She's got clusters of talent herself. Come on, lady. Let's go see Kling. (gasps) No. Nobody's up to anything, huh? If that's Mr. Kling behind the desk, I'd say he's one agent who's collected more than 10%. He's been murdered. Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. When you're out driving in the snow country, remember to get these two things before you start out. Tire chains and antifreeze. Motoring can be safe and pleasant, even though you run into a sudden storm or below freezing temperatures. But you must be prepared with chains and antifreeze in advance. Chains will stop a skidding car on roads where tires without chains hardly have a chance. And when there's ice outside your car, the water in the radiator and cooling system is almost bound to freeze and expand. So, before you start, be sure to get tire chains so you can get there safely. And for your radiator, the brand to get is Permaguard. Permaguard Antifreeze. Ask for these two items at your independent Chevron gas station or your standard station, where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Am I difficult? Sit down at something, won't you? I like surprises. But if your name is George Valentine, you're not so sure you do. For instance, the surprise of meeting the booking agent who got brown-eyed Audrey her job as Lucy Lamoureux's partner in a successful shadow dance act. The agent's name is Franz Kling, but he doesn't use it anymore. He's dead. Murdered. Sure he's murdered. You don't shoot yourself with a thirty-eight then swallow the pistol, do you? Who's arguing, Lieutenant Johnson? I am, with myself. Doc says it could have happened several hours ago, sometime this morning. The elevator man says he's got a toothache and didn't notice who's been up and down. Oh, George will be back in a minute. But I don't see any reason why this murder has to have anything to do with Lucy's new partner. My or... dear Miss Brooks, in one half hour since this was reported, we have got witnesses. To What? To the fact that Kling was an agent with no license, with no visitors except guys from the finance company, and with no clients. Well, then... Except Miss Audrey Murphy. 
Oh. In fact, this desk drawer shows the same thing. Not much of a desk. Not much of an office. Not much of an agent. Oh, no. People next door didn't hear any shots or anything. They just confirmed the fact of Audria. What do you mean? Up here several times in the last month. Also out a few times with a guy in the evening. Hello, Angel. Oh, hi, Well, Angel. Valentine, you find her? No. Took Lucy home, but Audrey wasn't there. Doesn't Audrey live with Lucy now? No, no, only to practice their act. She's got a room in a boarding house downtown. Well? Not at home. Landlady wouldn't notice the time of day if you gave her a free watch. Good case. I like cases like this. Nice and clear. All right, all right. So I bring you nothing. What did you find here? Well, just going over his things, George. Mr. Kling was up to something with Audrey, all right. Such as? Well, he got her the job with Lucy, for instance. But it looks like more than that. Only more what? Don't ask me. Okay. Hey, 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 where are you going? You just got here. I got a shadow. I'd like to get rid of him. Come in, Wally. I thought I left you back in that drugstore. Well, I had to make sure I know what's going on. If you're Lieutenant Johnson, you see, I'm the man it started with, and I... Did you know this guy, Kling? Uh, no, sir. I never met him. Lucy ever mentioned him? Uh, no, sir. She didn't know him either. Just the man who sent Audrey a tour. <laughs> Holy smoke, she must have been so glad to finally find somebody she could use as a partner. I mean... Well, people wouldn't notice the difference in their eyes. I mean, well, why should Lucy go asking a lot of questions? Why didn't you tell us about Audrey in the first place? Well, I mean, why should I? It was Lucy that man kept following, not Audrey. She was never around there. You'll get no sense out of him. Thanks, Wally. Goodbye. Wait a minute. Mr. Wallace, I want to know why you're so anxious about Lucy. Oh, well, you see, she's got a good deal of money she and her sister made in the years past. That's what and I mean. Then... Why does it interest you so much? But somebody like Muscat might be after it. Or Audrey, he's not the kind to want to work for money. Or this Kling man. Or... You, I mean you. Well, I mean, that's why I worry about Lucy so oh, much. Jesus. I just stop trying, will you? The boy's dense. Now go on, beat it, I said, Wally, and stay away from Lucy. We'll look out for her. Well, whatever you say. Now look, my fine feathered friend. All right, so I interfere. The boy's dense, but he's right. Huh? It does all tie together. Have you been going through the stuff in the desk drawer? Yeah, George. Well, that's why you didn't shut the drawer and look underneath it. What? Here, in the mat of the rug. A diamond? Yeah. That'll tie it together, won't it? Another diamond from Muscat's ring. This time at the scene of a murder. Why, no, sir. We bandaged Mr. Muscat's jaw and he left the emergency hospital here immediately. I don't know where he went. Of course we've been watching his rooms. His pool rooms, too. The rooms his bookie lives in. The rooms it's rumored he and that Brooklyn blonde once took a payoff in. Rooms, rooms, rooms. But you know what? They're all empty. Look at that. Lefty Muscat, a record a mile long. Attempted blackmail extortion. What about the girl, Lieutenant? Audria. Big, brave man with his fists, but he let her do the dangerous work like payoffs once in a while. But can't your men even find her? No, she's disappeared just like he has. Yeah, you're right, Brooksy. Nothing was gained by Kling's murder that I know of on the swindle end. They never actually did anything to Lucy, and she's the only one with money. No, and they won't now, either. Whatever this was, we stumbled into the middle of it somehow and broke it up. Brown eyes and lefty are probably on their way to China in opposite direction. Wait a minute. Yeah? Mr. Valentine, thank heaven I got you. I've been calling all over. I couldn't... Yeah, yeah, well, I just got back in the office now, Lucy. I've had a message from that muscat person, lefty. He's still in town. What? Call me wrong a couple of times. What? Never mind. What kind of a message? A note. The doorbell rang here at the apartment, and there was a little man at the door. He, he just handed it to me and ran. What did the note say? Listen, call circle 3752. Don't tell anyone or you'll be very unhappy. And it's signed Lefty Muscat. Well, did you call? Do you think I'm crazy? I'm scared to death. Now that I've told you, I'm going to get down to the police headquarters as fast as I can for protection. Well, I'll see you there, Lucy. Thanks. Well, what was it, George? What does he want? Yeah. Run down this number with the phone company fast. Huh? Uh, circle 3752. What'd you think it was? Long distance or something? What's your desire? Say, who is this anyway? Come on, Angel. Come 
Hartman Hotel. I don't know who's had the phone installed. It's one of those places, just room 22, that's all. Real choice neighborhood. Elevated tracks outside, sunken-eyed clerks inside. Kind of a place people hide out in, no questions asked. Skip it, I want to know about Lucy. I talked with Audrey. That means Muscat's out someplace on the loose. Lucy's all right. She tore straight to headquarters. Here we are, 22. All right, little Audrey. Hey. Hey. This is the same phone, all right, the same number. It's been less than ten minutes since... Lefty Muscat. Yeah. Yeah, that's been only about ten minutes, too. Deader in a macro. What did Muscat want me to come there for? I don't know, Lucy. Nothing makes any sense that I can see, but he was killed by the same gun that killed Mr. Kling. Hey, hey, oh, hey, oh. Oh, oh here you are. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> Hello, Lucy. Hello, Wallace. Gee, I've been so worried. I know. I... I've heard all about it. You're very solicitous. Holy smoke. When I saw you needed help, oh, I just come had on, to come... cut it out. Will you play another tune? Huh? Nobody's been trying to swindle a girl. Of course not. Well, that's certainly not what Lieutenant Johnson well, had. Don't look for him. He's getting a dragnet out for Audrey. Audrey? Yeah. Audrey has been seen a couple of times the past year working for Lefty Muscat. We know how jealous he was. He was her boyfriend, I guess. Yeah, and he swung at both you and me, Wallace, because he was looking for somebody she'd been spending time with. Well, that was Franz Kling, wasn't it? Sure. So Lefty found who he was and killed him, that's all. Then Audrey had found out what Lefty had done and killed him. What? Yeah, George? Women don't do things like that. Well, she was seen leaving that hideout room. Nobody else was. I phoned, must have caught her there just before or just after the murder. She had to have killed Muscat. And there's enough circumstantial evidence to hang her. Oh, I didn't know. Only, uh, there's another way it could all work out, too. Yeah. Like, uh, suppose you kill both men, Lucy. <gasps> what? what? See me once, you see me twice. I can't get it out of my mind. Now, see here, Mr. Valentine. Well, I suppose you... you tipped off a case by unwittingly interfering right when it was underway. By getting me into it and making it move too fast. While this muscat person was being killed, I was in my apartment all the way across town. That's what's bothering me, lady. The city towers is pretty plush and you can't hear the trolleys from there, I remember. What'd you say? But I heard a trolley when you phoned me. So you weren't in your apartment as you said you were. Well, in desperation, it's not a bad stunt. I don't follow you, George. Phone somebody and say you got a note to call some strange number. And you give the number where you are. By the time I called, you'd flipped on the radio, and by then I talked to Audria. Are you crazy? What I know, in the name I know, of... Wallace, I know. Audria's a separate person. A lucky double for Lucy here. All carefully established. But how often has she really been seen? Has she ever been seen with Lucy? Of all the ridiculous, Of stupid... all the people in the world to pull a double act, a twin act, you could do it most convincingly, Lucy. Because you really did have a double once. Your sister, who died a year ago. How? Well, maybe that's an angle. You ended up with all the dough, at least. Stop it. I won't listen to okay, you. Okay, let's stick to the present. Blonde mixed up with Muscat. Now, suppose that was you. Why? Search me, unless the guy had some kind of a hold over you, like your real sister, how she died, Stop maybe. Stop talking but... about my sister. Stop it. Stop it. If you were stuck with a guy like Muscat around your neck, you'd need a guy like that Agent Kling to set up the newly discovered partner for your dance routine. But when Kling realized why you were building a double identity... He'd very easily get nervous, so strike him out. Murder him. Holy gee, all those things you're saying, but they're different. They're not the same, those girls. Audrey and she Lucy are said different. Audrey's hair was dyed. Well, who's going to prove that now if we don't ever find Audrey? Accent? Well, oh, that's easy. The gal's been around. She's had training. She went to see Bourne yesterday. I'll kill you. I will. I don't care. Her eyes. Look at her eyes. They're blue. Can't you see that? Yes, George. Audrey's eyes were brown. You said so yourself. You know, I read an item in the newspaper a month or two ago. Probably lots of people must have seen the same article. It said that it is now possible to change the color of your eyes with a new type of contact lens. <gasps> we're waiting for Lieutenant Johnson. Do you know where he really is? He's searching your apartment for brown contact lenses. He's ordering an investigation of your sister's death a year ago. He's rechecking all the people who've been allowed to think they've met a little Audrey. He's... <laughs> hey, Lucy. Lucy, Lucy. Hey, what's the matter with Shut you? Shut up, you stupid uh, meddling hillbilly. Holy smoke. You didn't really do those things, did you? <laughs> well, what's the matter with you? You see, sick of something. 
You've seen me once. You've seen me twice. Boy, that's the way it was. I mean, it really was. Yeah, that's right, Wally. There was something phony with her sister's death. Apparently, Muscat knew it and was soft for her, too. So Lucy dreamed up a wild plan to get rid of him by inventing a new partner who could be blamed for his murder. Oh, not so wild, George. She might have got away with it. Holy gee. Who, who'd suspect that of a lady like Lucy? <laughs> oh, Buster. If I ever met a guy who was stupid when it came to women. Well, I'm impulsive and persistent, that's all. She tried to brush me off, but what I just... What you need is a lecture on the facts of life. How to but pick... she didn't break my heart. I already got plans for somebody else. I learned my lesson. You what? Mm-hmm. You couldn't tell Lady Godiva from little Goldilocks. You couldn't oh, even... Oh, but this is different. Oh, honest, honest it is. You don't have to worry about me. It's, uh, Miss Brooks. It's... Oh, no! <laughs> what am I laughing at? Good night, George. <laughs> Listen to the difference. In a few seconds, you will hear Geiger counters measuring automobile engine wear. The engines are equipped with irradiated piston rings, which make it possible for the Geiger counters to detect wear as it occurs. You will hear authentic scientific proof that new RPM motor oil cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts, doubles the life of the average auto engine between major overhauls due to lubrication. First, Let's listen to the Geiger counter slowly click off the low wear rate of new RPM. Now the much faster wear rate of a premium type oil as designated by the American Petroleum Institute. Now new RPM again. You have just heard Geiger counters clicking off the scientific proof that new RPM motor oil is years ahead. Yes, new RPM doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Try it. Sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations, where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, John Daner as Wallace, Doris Singleton as Lucy, Eddie Fields as Muscat, and Dave Young as the officer. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>